Hi, this is Dr. Viral Parekh once again from Calcutta Academy of Radiology. This is the case 11 of the case of the week series. Here is a 17 year old boy presenting with swelling near medial canthi bilaterally and there is associated nasal obstruction also bilaterally. An MRI was advised. Here is a T1 weighted image. As you can see here, that there are ultra signal intensity lesions near the medial canthi of both eyes. The lesion on the left is slightly more hypo intense than the lesion on the right. Here is the T2 weighted image. The same findings are replicated here. This is the hyper intense lesion on the left and this is the hyper intense lesion on the right. Both are situated near the medial canthi of both eyes. Here is a T2 weighted coronal image and as we can see from this image that there are bilaterally symmetrical ultra signal intensity lesions in the medial aspects of both orbits which are extending downwards into the nasal cavity and are terminating here at the level of inferior nasal turbinates. Before we discuss the case further, let us discuss a little bit of anatomy of nasolacrimal apparatus. As you can see from these fat suppressed images of the orbit, we can see that these are the lacrimal glands which are situated on the supralateral aspect of both orbits. So let us now discuss the anatomy of the nasolacrimal apparatus further. Before we discuss it further, I would like to thank Dr. Madhuri Salve for providing this sketch. As we have discussed, that lacrimal gland is situated in the supralateral aspect of the orbit. It has got two parts, orbital part and that palpebral part. The palpebral part is situated inferiorly and is slightly small in size. As we can see here that there are multiple excretory ducts which come out from the lacrimal gland. These ducts are usually 10 to 12 in number. The function of these ducts is to bring tear produced by the lacrimal gland to the surface of the eye. The tears not only lubricate but also prevent the physical damage of the cornea. It has got also some microbial properties, antimicrobial properties also. The tears then track medially towards the lacrimal lake. The lacrimal lake further drains into the superior canaliculus and the inferior canaliculus. They ultimately join and form a common canaliculus which has a valve which is called valve of Rosenmuller. The function of this valve is to prevent retrograde flow of the tear. The tears then track into the lacrimal sac, which is usually 12 to 15 mm in length and 5 to 6 mm in breadth. The tear then track further down into the nasolacrimal duct, which opens into the inferior meatus near the inferior nasal turbinate. It has also got a valve, which is called valve of Hasner. So to summarize, the nasolacrimal apparatus has a lacrimal drainage apparatus which begins in the medial aspect of the orbit with two orifices known as the superior and inferior puncta. These orifices drain into two canaliculi, superior and inferior, which form a common canaliculus. The valve of Rosenmuller, which lies at the junction of common canaliculus and the lacrimal sac, prevents the reflux of tears back into the canaliculus. The lacrimal sac is located within the inframedial wall of the orbit known as the lacrimal sac fossa. The lacrimal sac fossa is formed by the lacrimal bone and the frontal process of the maxillary bone. The lacrimal sac is oval and measures around 12 to 15 mm in length. The nasolacrimal duct is a membranous canal extending inferiorly for about 18 mm from the nasolacrimal sac to the inferior meters of the nasal cavity. So to demonstrate the nasolacrimal drainage apparatus on this T2 weighted coronal image, what we can see here, here is the location where the lacrimal sac is situated and which drains into the nasolacrimal duct which further drains into the inferior meatus near the inferior nasal turbinate. So, let us now go back to our case. What we can see here on T2 weighted coronal image is that this is the dilated 
lacrimal sac and this is the dilated nasolacrimal duct this findings are bilaterally symmetrical and what is the cause of this obstruction the cause of this obstruction is at the obstruction at the level of valve of hasner which is causing bilaterally symmetrical dilatation of the lacrimal drainage apparatus this condition is known as dacryocystocil it might get secondary infected then it is called dacryocystitis sometimes it ruptures spontaneously dacryocystosis are caused by obstruction of both the proximal and distal ends of the nasolacrimal duct an imperforate hasner valve causes the distal blockage but the cause of proximal obstruction is less clearly understood but the rosenmuller valve obstruction has been suggested a dacryocystocil forms when the tears accumulate within the lacrimal sac as a result of an obstruction more distal within the lacrimal drainage apparatus the causes of the dacryocystocil include congenital deformities trauma primary and recurrent tumors affecting the nasolacrimal duct idiopathic blockage of the nasolacrimal duct iatrogenic causes including treatment of head and neck cancer in the sino nasal region so that's all for today thanks a lot for your kind attention the dipavali is just two days away wish you all a very very happy dipavali